It's Christmas and I'm getting wreathed in smiles. It's time to make a Christmas wreath, and I do it the easy way. I have a floral foam ring with a plastic back. That means that the, the plastic back acts as a reservoir. So when the, when the wreath needs rewatering, I lay it on the ground, chuck a bucket of water over, leave it for half an hour, drain it and put it back. Now what we need for this is the hook, and this is where the aluminium wire comes in. And I just shove one piece through there, one piece through there, draw the ends forward, turn it over, flip it over sunny side up and give a little twist. Aluminium wire is very pliable um, and it's also very strong so a little twist around both sides there. Quick as a flash. And there's your hanging hook. Now all we've got to do is fill it full of flowers and foliage. I'm using here something called Pinus radiata, which is the Monterey pine. This is a tree that comes from California and we use it as a shelter belt around the garden East Ruston. And it also, although it's a tall growing tree, it cuts very well into a large hedge. And it's one of those kind of plants that I, was always, I would always advise anybody that's interested in flower arranging to grow in the garden because, let's face it, if it's a tree and you're cutting it all the time, it's never going to be big. Um, but it's lovely at Christmas time and you do get that wonderful scent of pine. Wish this was smell o vision you know. Um, now here we are, you can see I've gone around and I've made one ring of pine. I've got to now repeat that in the opposite direction. Once you know what you're doing, and you, you know, if you can get the, the number of sprigs that you actually need, you can be fast. It's also helped having a lazy Susan because this spinning thing, you can give it a twirl and, and you, can, you can in actual fact see gaps and see where you need to add bits and all the rest of it. There you are, two rings added and now we just start adding the foliage and the flowers. Starting at the top so we know where we are, I'm just going to go around with some lovely sprigs of holly which is seasonal and festive and great fun. Secateurs to the fore, cut those back. We, I actually like, if you can see what I'm doing here, to remove the odd leaf where it gets in the way of the berries so that you see more of the berries. That's quite important and these, any wayward shoots that have got too big, just trim those down as we go. I've got some nice sprigs of variegated holly here. Um, and when you have a sprig of holly like this, don't just cut the top out like that and chuck the rest away, but cut it into three and you can use all of those bits when you're making a wreath. The cut ends won't show and all you're doing is you're using the leaves to act as a filler. But the other thing I would advise people is to use as many types of material as you possibly can. So we'd have a green leaf, a variegated leaf, a furry leaf, a soft leaf, a hard leaf. Doesn't matter what you've got, you can make a wreath out of anything. Now we'll just have another look at that. And you can see how we're coming along. And you can see how the centre of the wreath is gradually getting filled up. Uh, here we have some sprigs of the common ivy and you can see they've got the fruited heads, uh, fruiting heads on them and these are invaluable for filling spaces. So I've cut the sprigs to size so I know exactly what I'm doing, what I want. Looking absolutely wonderful. And don't forget though, in times of famine, when the winters are hard and very cold, if your wreath is on the front door and it's easily accessible, the birds will come and have a free feast. That's it. Now you can see why I was wreathed in smiles. First we need something to hang the wreath. Right. She has had a haircut. 